I'd like to call the Tuesday, April 5th, 2022, Board of Public Works and Safety meeting to order. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Tim Warner. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Approval, approval of minutes. Do so, I have a motion? So moved. I will second that discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes to zero. Public comment. Do we have anybody here from the public that would like to speak? Anybody on social media? Not yet. Clerk Treasurer, claims approval. Okay, we've got first quarter payroll in the amount of $1,926.88. Sorry, I should probably do that. Make a motion to approve first quarter payroll. I will second that discussion. Hearing none, all in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 2 0. We've got uh, April 1st, 2022's payroll in the amount of four, $437,417.57. Make a motion to approve the payroll. I will second that. Discussion, hearing none, all in favor state by saying aye. Aye. Aye, opposed, motion passes 2-0. Civil city claims in the amount of $681,571.82. Make a motion to approve city civil board of work claims. I will second that. Discussion, hearing none, all in favor state by saying aye. Aye. Aye, opposed, motion passes 2-0. Sewage claims in the amount of $233,107.71. Make a motion to approve the sewage claims. I will second that discussion. Hearing none, all in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Amo opposed, motion passes 2-0. Water claims in the amount of $90,852. Make a motion to approve the water claims. I will second that discussion. Hearing none, all in favor state by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes 2-0. I also have an engagement letter dated March 18, 2021 from Baker Tilly. Uh, this engagement letter is uh, allowing us to utilize the services of Baker Tilly for the budgeting process. So I'm asking for the board's approval on this engagement letter. That is something that we also use every year. I will make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion. I would like to say Baker Tilly has been invaluable as a part of this process to make a honest, balanced budget, as part of our general fund, and uh, look forward to their support again. So further discussion. Are the rates on page three um, Courtney, the rates were dated as of September 1st, 21. Are those the same going forward they since are. it's six yep. months later? Okay, yeah. thank you. No further discussion. Uh, all in favor, state by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, I'm sorry, aye. Opposed? Motion passes 2 0. Uh, and then lastly, we've got, and, and um, Tim Werner, Werner, the water superintendent can speak more to this but we've got write-off recommendations from the water department that i believe you have a spreadsheet mm -hmm. yeah. about so a lot of these were just uh there's some of the backflows or businesses that have closed um some copper horn sales the mounts aren't really high um, excuse me tim could you speak into the microphone thank you yeah. the, the mounts aren't really high uh speaking with courtney um basically uh, it's cheaper to let these go than the, to um, pursue them in, in, in court. Uh, so what, what we've done is uh, we composed the list so any of the contractors or any of these people come back in, uh, they will have to pay these balances before any permits or services would be turned on. So Norfolk Southern didn't pay? No, that, was, that must that's have been amazing a, to me. That's a water hook, a, a water fill. Um, this is all these uh, dates are before my time, so I've been trying to do a little uh, research on them. What I remember about Norfolk Southern, every couple of years when they pull into their yard over there, they bring those crew uh, wagons with them. 
They must have been filling them up for showers and bathrooms and never paid the bill. Yeah, 20, whatever it is here. 20, 26. 49. Yeah. And, and so. most of these, most of these write-off recommendations were recommendations um, when Todd Taylor was superintendent as well. It's just amazing you see certain names on here and corporations that don't want to be good community partners, not only in LaPorte, but in other communities. It's amazing that uh, they can't afford 2649. So. And some of the like some of the contractors that are on here, I'm going to get with uh, engineering, and they won't be able to cut any kind of building permits or any permits in the city unless unless these balances are paid. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. <clears throat> Further discussion. Hearing none. All in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes two zero. That's all for me. Is that it? <laughs> oh, Dana. Dana Gonder is, has been with the city of LaPorte for over 10 years, and she is moving on from the city of LaPorte. Tomorrow is her last day, so we yeah. thank Dana for all of her service to the city. I know um, every, everybody knows Dana because she's the payroll administrator, so <laughs> all of, all of really? the employees know Dana Gonder. So. We, yeah, we want to thank Dana for all of her years of service here and, um, and wish her well. Dana, would you like to take the microphone and nope. speak? <laughs> <laughs> That's your favorite thing to do. Please, Dana. We wish you the best. Thank you. And thank you for your service to our community. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dana. Department head reports, and we'll begin today. Uh, Mark Schreiber has a couple of conflicts. He's a very busy man. Uh, we have a couple of uh, items that he needs to put in front of us. Mr. Schreiber. Want to jump right down. into the agenda, those agenda items, if Please. we can? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we did uh, send out to you a couple agreements for fireworks. Uh, that's with that with the local company that uh, did our uh, Lake Fest fireworks last year. Um, one is for the Fourth of July, and the other is for Lake Fest this year. Uh, the, late, uh, the Fourth of July will be uh, in uh, uh, collaboration with another group here in town that is going to do a concert at the amphitheater. I'm not sure they haven't announced it yet, so I'm not going to spoil their big announcement. But we will have a Fourth of July concert at the amphitheater, followed by fireworks, and then Lake Fest will have the same fireworks on the uh, Saturday night this year, which is the uh, 30th. Uh, that'll also be in conjunction with a uh, big concert event that we'll be announcing soon for uh, Lake Fest. So I would just like permission to be able to sign these contracts to have the fireworks this year. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. <clears throat> Discussion. I would just like to say we, uh, we do have a couple vendors in house. Uh, there's great opportunity to have uh, sponsorship on the 4th of July that everybody will see. Laporte is the capital for the day on July 4th. And uh, this for fireworks for our community will cost $20,000. Correct. That there'll be great sponsorship <coughs> opportunities for all <laughs> businesses uh, and LEAP and everybody around. So, uh, but we're going to have to limit it to 20000 So get your name in early if you do want to sponsor. Yep, and Lake Fest as well. Uh, we're soliciting Lake, Lake Fest sponsorships at this time as well, and that's obviously much more than just the fireworks. So, uh, But the uh, Lake Fest is a $15,000 show. Same, same show that we had last year, which was above and beyond, and we always get a great hometown uh, a bump up in, in what they provide for us for the cost. So great deal. Further discussion? So just to be clear, so there's the cost of July 4th, which is 20000 and then there's the cost of July 30th, which is 15000 Yeah, the, the cost is more right? on July 4th because of the number of shows that are requested on that day, so it puts a strain on their uh, labor force. So it's kind of a premium to have a, a July 4th show. That's why I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't 20000 total for both events. It's actually no, it's 20 and then and 15, 15 for so like 35. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 2-0. Yep. And I just want to remind the public, uh, restrooms will open on the 15th. Uh, the skate park lights are now turned on uh, now that we're into April, and we're trying to get everything, uh, parks back up to full season mode. Uh, but also want to remind the public, if they see something, say something as far as vandalism, bad actors, anything you see in the parks, 
we, we always will address those issues, but we do need the public to be our eyes and ears out there at times. So anything you see, report either to the uh, park office or the non-emergency police line. Well, and when the police came Sunday to Ben Reese Park, um, neighbors, as the middle schoolers left, 10 or 12 of them, uh, neighbors witnessed one of them throwing into the bush small quantity of marijuana, small bottle of uh, alcohol. We're talking seventh graders mm -hmm. as they left. So um, we've got work to do, and we're going to be monitoring the parks and uh, make sure it's for those that want to have a positive experience. Yeah, the parks are, are nothing but positives for the neighborhoods. Unfortunately, any public space can draw out bad actors. So, you know, again, we just need the public to be our eyes and ears and uh, take ownership of those neighborhood parks especially to make sure that uh, we know what's going on there. And, and certainly we'll follow up on anything that we hear. But uh, glad to hear that, you know, police, we had some police presence there. And things are, things are only going to get better. And we've got some great programs coming up. So, And we need the neighbors' support and help to absolutely keep it clean. Thank you. Mark, you're welcome to take off if you have meetings. So we'll continue with department heads. Tim Werner. Thank you. Um, we, we started cleaning Warnicky 6. Uh, a couple months ago, I came to the board for two well cleanings. Uh, we pushed the well cleaning of Warn Warnicky 6 back just for a timing issue. Um, so that, that started yesterday. That's going to be a five-day uh, surge block clean. Um, after the five days, we'll do the bacteria test, put that well back in line. That water or from the Warnicky well field goes to the Lake Station or Lake Street uh, filtration plant. The, the genset out at plant <coughs> two that we've been talking about finally got flashed from Cummings power uh, diesel equipment. Uh, so it is back up and running. Um, so we will stop paying for the rental of the, the unit that's been there since October, which is as good as expense is about $4,000 a month to have that unit there, <coughs> uh, but vital to our operations if we ever had a power outage. Um, just another reminder that we'll be starting spring flushing April 17th. That's Easter night. Uh, we'll go on for about three weeks uh, from 8 p.m. till 5 a.m. Uh, just to remind the public, if they do get caught with a load of laundry and, and have some uh, discoloration and water in their washer, not to dry those clothes, just to try to wash them again. If the stains do not come out at that time, they can contact the water department and we will supply them with some rust out uh, that will take that that uh, discoloration out of their laundry. We have that on hand. There's always an operator on duty uh, 24 hours a day at the water department. Jerry Jackson, wastewater. Our uh, phosphorus project is going out at treatment plant and under construction. The, um, we're just dealing with now with all the submittals and, and getting pumps, tanks, and everything ordered. Uh, been a concern because everything's coming slow, but so far so good looks like we should our deadline is February next year to be in running and under compliance, and I think we should. So, so far, so good. Contractor seems like he's doing a good job and knows what he's doing. Um, got the sewer crew over in the letters and numbers area. They're vacuuming down and potholing the, uh, to locate the water and sewer, water and gas mains, rather, uh, looking at what elevations are at to see whether there's interference problems when we come through the storm sewer. So they're, they're getting ready for that, and we should. I think we bid in bid in May. So letter numbers, we're doing what we said we do. We're doing what we said. <clears throat> Thank you. Craig Phillips, planning, engineering, and anything else you want to say? <laughs> 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 um, busy working on getting the parking study kicked off. Um, going to be working on that over the next three to four months. Um, also working with the city engineer on the um, first phase of the streetscape improvements along Monroe from Lincoln Way North to um, State. Working on a couple of the housing projects uh, that, not projects, but housing uh, developments that the city is looking at doing. Uh, 18th Street, um, working on the rezoning process of that. Started that with the council last night so that we can get that um, out for proposals um, and offering. Uh, hopefully by the end of the month, if not um, sometime next month, depending on the timing of that, and then continuing to work on um, uh, Beachwood Lakes uh, as well um, and lots of other projects. So You're busy. Mm -hmm. That's great to hear. Nick Otis, I have legal. a couple items on the agenda, but nothing specific. So 
Jeff Batchelor, Code and Street Department. Yeah, we're out patching with cold patch, and then we also got the total patcher going. Uh, we're hauling concrete for the paving. Uh, they're doing, they remove all the intersections where the concrete is, get that out, and then they'll start the paving probably looks like the middle of May. Um, right now, we're, we've had about 900 violations with code. Uh, the dumpsters started back last week, so people just pee, continue to use them. We want you to use them, be, be respectful so that you're not setting it down on the ground. Uh, another thing that we're looking at uh, is also a rental inspection and a landlord registry. We're looking to start that within, I don't know, I'm looking at the paperwork now to get it all started. And have public meetings engage the rental owners. And what is the importance of this? The importance is to one, to bring consistency for housing so that people have a better understanding and know what's expected of the landlords and what's expected of the tenants and a better quality of life for people. It's not to pick on people or anything like that. It's just to make sure that people are living in a certain standard of, of property. And I also want to say, I know there was some stress given to you over this RV situation, but it was an example. Um, anybody that has interest in that should talk to the neighbors, see what's been going on for years that's been ignored. Uh, code enforcement and I were there when the police were there to pull a, to have, uh, I guess, arrest an individual that had a warrant out and uh, we're not tolerating it. And the RV had no, there was going to be no improvement. That RV was never going to be used uh, to move again. Um, the owner of it stated that very clearly and was looking for someone to take it away. Yeah, he didn't have money to fix it. He didn't have nothing. It was, it was an RV, so it, there's not much properties and, you know, somebody coming and buying it and, and scrapping it. So he was kind of stuck. He signed it over to us so that we could remove it from the property. And it was removed and somebody took responsibility of it. And it's not an eyesore for the city of Laborde. As well as what's been going on at that area uh, is no longer with all the calls in for drug trafficking and other things. We're not tolerating it. I don't apologize for it. It's not Jeff. He's just doing his job. It's my responsibility. And anybody has this issue with it can call me direct 363-7293. Chief Breton. Uh, we have all the lease cars in now and they're decaled. Uh, we're working on those. Unfortunately, we had uh, one of the cars we were trading in was five minutes from being taken to uh, the street department for us to remove the equipment and it got rear-ended at a stoplight. So we're working with LaPorte Chrysler to get that fixed and go through the supposed insurance of the other driver. We're still working on that. Um, hopefully next meeting we'll have swear-ins. The state's kind of dragging their feet on getting the last two approved. Uh, some boxes weren't checked or whatever. Uh, then the only other thing I have is on the agenda for later. Jess Bruder, Communications. Good morning. Um, I'll be working with engineering and streets to put together a uh, paving plan presentation. We did this a couple of years ago. Just really helpful to get this information out in front of the public so they are aware of what our plans are for this um, spring and summer and then also in the fall. Um, I'll also be working with admins and department heads to make um, some minor updates and bug fixes to the city website. Sarah Nimitz has already let me know about a commission that's going to need a new page. Um, just some small things like that. So I'll be emailing people about that. Um, and then again, it's starting to get nice out. We've got a lot of events coming up. So liveinthelakelife.org is the hub for all things happening in the city of LaPorte this summer. And that's all I have. Thank you. Chief, if did you want to take a minute, I forgot to ask, to introduce any new employees that you may have sitting was, in the audience? I was going to wait till that came up on the agenda. Oh, gotcha. Fair enough. <laughs> um, Mike Riley, <laughs> Leap. Awesome. <laughs> Kirk <Kirk-Kirk>, Leap. <laughs> <Kirk-Kirk, Leap. laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> Mike Riley did have a comment, though, on last, at last oh, night's yeah, city I, council meeting. But he was hiding at home when he did that, so... <laughs> different in person uh, good morning to the board of public works <laughs> Bert cook executive director of the laporte economic advancement partnership just a couple things to share this morning one a thank you to mayor dermody and craig phillips who attended the small business roundtable uh, last week pleased to say we had about 35 um, business owners in our downtown attend we spent the majority of the time discussing uh, the parking study that is getting ready to, to happen and and taking input from those 
business owners on uh, on what we can do to improve our downtown. So we'll continue to uh, to have that medium to um, process any any um, questions or input that that our downtown business owners have in how the city grows and, and develops. Um, the um, second thing. Which Housing I, 2022. Which, thank you. Yeah, which I am forgetting <laughs> for a second. Um, last night with the with the city council had the ability to or had the opportunity to share that we had on Tuesday of last week, we had 19 people move into the banks. Um, we've got another uh, approximately 11 moving in shortly. Um, have seen some pictures of those move ins. It looks great. And, and I think the really pleasing part of this that, that I was able to share was of those people that are moving in, 85% of them are from Laporte already. That was a discussion point. I know it's been shared on social media quite a bit, but um, there was, there's been some misconception that that development was, was catering to out-of-towners or people from other areas. And I think from the start, we've been adamant that um, first and foremost, it gives our residents a new opportunity, a new place to live. And so we've seen that take place with the, the move-ins that have occurred. And we expect that to continue as um, the additional buildings begin to be occupied later this year. So, Our residents in Laporte deserve to live their best life, and that's what we're trying to provide. Absolutely. And bring their kids home that have educated here and have, have a chance to yeah. come back home and live in Laporte. I think it's it's been a big draw to bring people back to Laporte, people that graduated and maybe went away for school or lived somewhere else, and now they're coming back to Laporte to to live and work and absolutely. I love think, the lake I think life. For the, in the initial wave of people moving in, we've seen a it's been pretty consistent that it's younger individuals, and there might be some other younger individuals on my team that are really excited about moving in here shortly. Um, Mike Riley? <laughs> Did you get kicked out of your house? I'm sorry, I said, I said younger. <laughs> and also you have Maple Commons? Absolutely. So I think that everything that we've got going on with our residential market, all of these new products that are coming to the market are, are exciting, but first and foremost, they give those individuals an opportunity to come home and find a, a great place to live and, and kind of set up their, their roots here in our community. Yeah, that's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. We will, any department head that does not have business before us can go ahead and have a great day. CBS Service, LLC. Uh, nobody here from CBS. Amazing that no one is here. We're going to move that off the agenda. Do I need a motion? No. Request for use, Laporte High School school graduation. Annette. Leffler. I will request us to close um, two portions of two streets around Kiwanis every year for graduation just to accommodate the foot traffic and the kids lining up. Um, and so that area is, um, I should probably read it, but I'm telling you the exact right place. The exact date? It, uh, oh, graduation is on June Second. 2nd. It is a Thursday evening. They're requesting that closing to be between um, 6.30, I think, and 9 o'clock. Six and nine, excuse me, I'm sorry. And um, the area they're requesting is about a four block area between on Klimzak Drive between D, well, it says D and C, but it's actually really a little bit further out so but they only they only close hard close that one block there and then the block behind the bleachers um between klimzak and 10th street they close that also to make a motion to approve second discussion hearing none all in favor state by saying aye 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 opposed motion passes two zero and we wish all those graduates success as they move either into the job world or off to <clears throat> higher education so crazy isn't it graduation Maze, amazing <laughs> um, the second request I have is for the fourth of July parade and there's um, a couple layers to it so we're requesting all the side streets um, all the cross streets on Lincoln Way to be closed um, during the time of the parade and um, we are also requesting that Kiwanis be able to use 618 um, Plaza 
and that is they will open it up it's it um, they would like to close the the route starting about 7 a.m. because they have a run in the morning and they'll open it back up as soon as the parade passes do I have a motion to approve so moved I will second that <coughs> discussion thank you to Kiwanis Mike Riley for their efforts to make another great 4th of July uh, we are working on paperwork for capital of the day too it's been requested mm -hmm. perfect uh, all in favor state by saying aye 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 <clears throat> opposed motion passes to zero um, the last thing I have is I'm requesting the board to sign a document that I need for the state of Indiana to close when on my um, closing Lincoln Way request and all it says is that we are agreeing to use city streets as a detour off of Lincoln Way once while Lincoln Way's closed that we we are going to use city streets to detour them I'll make a motion to approve I will second that discussion hearing none all in favor state by saying aye 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 opposed motion passes to zero thank you thank you Nick Otis thank you the first item uh, that I have here mayor is the 20 21 uh, vendor well it's actually through this year as well vendor agreement between the city of LaPorte and LCP transportation uh, the mayor uh, in, Beth West is is on vacation this week that's why I'm presenting this this is uh, an agreement between the city and LCP transportation but really it's for transport allows transport to get reimbursed for uh, transporting Medicaid and Medicare patients so this entity helps with that I've reviewed this agreement uh, and, and I think uh, I'll let mayor certainly speak to this, but the idea of trying to make transport profitable potentially, but at least not a, not a money loser. And this is a way for them to increase their, their revenues. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. I will second that. And yes, um, transport for years has lost $150,000 or so each year. Uh, Beth West has done a great job taking over transport and committing to at worst case breaking even while keeping affordable transportation available for our community and uh, we're excited about uh, the future of transport other discussion so these these fees get reimbursed by the HMO correct okay all in favor state by saying aye 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 opposed motion passes to zero mayor I have a call I have to take here shortly and I wanted there was another item I emailed that I don't know if it made on the agenda about this uh, development uh, that Burt Cook has been working on and it's to start the process for the city to uh, post this property for sale so if I could make a, make, make a request Please. for that I apologize that I didn't get this on the agenda quicker but uh, a company that is redeveloping several parcels and I'll have Bert uh, do maybe a better job of explaining it for storage units just south of the railroad tracks uh, has acquired quite a few parcels and there is a very small parcel that is 0 0.5 acres that the city owns uh, that uh, is undeveloped and potentially the city will sell this property uh, at the assessed value to the developer in order to start that this is a lot like the uh, Dahani development that the city did uh, along Pine Lake Ave with the Park Department property we need the disposing agent being the Board of Works to make a determination that the highest and best use of this land is to sell it to an abutting landowner the cost of maintaining the track equal exceeds the fair market value and it's economically unjustifiable to sell the tract under the regular uh, process for disposing of property and this does not have an address but it's identified as 46-06-35-281-004.000-043 so I request that the Board of Works consider that so that we, the next step will be to post this in the newspaper and then to engage with the adjacent property owner Mr. Cook, would you like to speak to it? Just a couple things to add, Mayor. Um, so Nick, Nick covered it. This I really like this project because you've got an area there that is now all of the surrounding properties are owned by one property owner. Um, but it's been a mess. I think um, 
Chief Snyder's not here, but he would be one that could speak, and I know Chief Breton can do as well, can speak to it as well, that we've had issues with that property over a long period of time. We've got a developer who's purchased it, a professional company who, who specializes in storage, so they're uh, intent on cleaning all of that up and, and making it into a professional development. Um, on the other side of this, we've talked often about you know, the age of the city of LaPorte. We have a lot of properties the city has acquired in some way, shape, or form over the years, and they're not productive. They're just basically um, properties we can't um, liquidate or do anything with. So this gives us an opportunity to take a parcel that um, is not currently on the tax rolls, put it back on the tax rolls, and find a productive use for it. It would not be buildable otherwise. It would not hold value to anybody other than the property owner who now owns everything surrounding it. So. We've got some steps that have to occur. Uh, we'll but likely be in front of the BZA at some point, Traffic Commission next week um, uh, as well. So we're going to go through those steps, but this is the first of the steps kind of in a process that will take place over the next few months. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. I will second that discussion. So d again, what you're just approving is, is that you're making this determination and then the city will then uh, there'll be a publication, a notice in the newspaper. Uh, there's some additional steps, and then uh, if this works out, a purchase agreement will be back in front of you here probably in the next 30 days. Uh, Bert did mention uh, <clears throat> there is a portion of this going through the Traffic Commission that would eventually end up in front of the City Council. Jackson Street, north of Washington Street, which is a, a dead end right now, would be vacated uh, along with an alleyway uh, that, that's pretty much unused other than for criminal activity according to Chief Breton. So that uh, the developer would effectively own this entire parcel and, and make it into storage units where, it, you know, right by the railroad tracks, I think it's a good a good development for uh, the, the area right there. So And while storage units aren't sexy, it cleans up a property that, a uh, large part of property that's been a problem mm -hmm. for Chief Breton. So there's a bigger picture here. Absolutely. This is a big storage unit developer. These will be professionally done. Uh, in there, there is a need. I, I, I recently moved within the last year. There's not a lot of availability uh, for these, and so again, right in that area, that's a that's a pretty good spot for that. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and uh, oh, I think it's fantastic. I think it'll it'll it will definitely serve that need, and it gives us some insulation from the railroad tracks as well, which which helps. But the cleaning up. And making it safer is one less area that our police have to cover right now. So uh, we do have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 2-0. Thank, Thank you. you. Nick, before you go, any public comment? Let me double check here. Just making sure I didn't have anything else on and the And any other items that you may have here? No public comment at this point. And I don't have anything else that um, I think we've went over the job descriptions, correct, Courtney? I don't think there's anything you need. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Payroll Administrator, HR Assistant. So, yeah, the only updates to this <clears throat> job description for Payroll Administrator, HR Assistant, were the HR duties, the HR functions. Um, so we're asking the Board of Works to approve the revised um, Vice Payroll Administrator, HR Assistant, job description. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. I will second that, and this is just to update it to? Payroll and HR. Okay, payroll and HR. All in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Passes 2-0. Administrative Assistant, Police Department, Chief Brett. I'll let Courtney, you want to explain the <clears throat> difference that we made here? So um, she, say no, let him do it. Well, we need a lot of updates. <laughs> She's got, yeah, there's we a... <laughs> want to ensure that we are have the, the most trained admins possible in, um, in the city of LaPorte. So we did add a lot of different functions on here that should have been on here and maybe were not previously spelled out. Um, and that was on, on our end, on the clerk treasurer's office end. Um, just to ensure that um, at the end of the year, everything flows back into either the audit or the annual report. And so with an admin that understands all the all day-to-day the -day functions and how they work in the big picture, 
we updated the job description to, to encompass all of that. So um, I'll let you introduce Trisha. And she's been at our, our office oh. for a couple weeks, but. And she's been with us a couple days and what a <clears throat> difference already. Uh, and I know she wants to step up here and give a few words. <laughs> <laughs> Trisha, could you stand for the public? <laughs> We welcome you. I will tell you this. Um, I had the opportunity uh, in the private sector to deal with Trisha when she worked for another corporation. And she dealt with all the difficult issues, tough issues. And I think Courtney and I both have nothing but respect and we're excited when we were able to have her move over to the city. So welcome. Yeah. And she does, she hasn't run off, so you know the paperwork that oh, she's ready. And filing she's ready. <laughs> that's sitting there. She's ready to run off. I just wanted to clear you to clarify for us. So I will make a motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. <clears throat> in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes 2-0. Welcome. Jerry Jackson. <clears throat> We've got uh, pay request number five for uh, Monroe Manor or HRP. Uh, the <clears throat> request is in the amount of $132,012.00. Um, our engineers reviewed it and our inspector, um, it's, uh, I recommend payment. The, um, this is 48% of the job, so they're making good progress. Um, the, um, <clears throat> the job total is $3.1 million. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Discussion. Jerry, I was out there this weekend. Uh, people are excited. The neighbors are excited and very appreciative of all you and your team's work and what's being accomplished there, so thank you. Is there a Jerry Jackson statue anywhere? Yeah, well, I'm telling you, it's coming. <laughs> the red hat. Oh, the red nice. hat. He'll be wearing it. That's the last phase. <laughs> <laughs> Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 2-0. Uh, re request permission to uh, solicit quotes uh, for roofing work out at the treatment plant. In uh, 17, we roofed three of the six flat roofs. Um, and I want to finish that job. Most of the, the roofs remaining are from uh, 1988, so they're, they're long past their, uh, their lifespan. Uh, we've done, you know, some maintenance and patching to keep them going this long over the years, but it's time. Um, the uh, the job back in uh, in seventeen was sixty three thousand. Um, we're about this is about thirty percent, thirty seven percent of that area. So I expect. Well, I I, did, I ran some numbers, and I won't throw the number out in the public meeting, but I think we're going to be similar with inflation and COVID and everything. Yeah. We're probably going to be on a similar number time even though it's smaller area so I'd request permission to go ahead and solicit quotes make a motion to approve second discussion hearing none all in favor state by saying aye 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 opposed motion passes 2-0 because again we're upgrading everything across the city and it's necessary we're not going to kick the can down the road to keep things running trickling filter pump house that was that's the name of the roofs. The, it's the trickling okay. filter pump house, the screen building, and the bio tower pump house. Perfect. Okay. Tim Warner, proposal for engineering service. Yeah, well, um, just asking the board for permission to sign a proposal to Nice Engineering for uh, on your item list. There would be the um, water, the survey for the raw water line coming from Soldier Memorial Park to Lake Street. Uh, the reason we want to get that surveyed is just to take the least intrusive route from the uh, from the park to uh, the Lake Street plant. Um, the water, the raw water design of the same line. And I'm also taking advantage of Jerry's number and letter projects on I Street. Uh, we have uh, a six inch water main that that's on I Street that we have a lot of issues with. Uh, since the road's gonna be closed, it's full reconstruction. We're gonna go ahead and replace that water main from 10th to 18th Street. Um, that's why the uh, design's so cheap on the I Street because Jerry's already paid for the surveying and everything out there. So I just thought it was nice to- Poor Jerry. I'm gonna glom on you. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was, you know, it's in the best interest of the city and the water department to go and take advantage of, of the services that are already been done in that area. 
and uh, throwing some new water main in that area for, for the residents. That's fantastic. Infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. So. And these are not to exceed. Um, with speaking with Nice, the, we're probably going to have quite a bit of savings in the raw water survey. Uh, there's not a whole lot of utilities through the park or down Central Ave. But uh, it's just a, uh, when we have them surveyed, when it goes out to bid, that way if there's any conflicts, there's no change orders down the road. Uh, that way we, we know what the cost is up front. So that's why we feel it's good to have that survey done. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 2-0. Craig Phillips. Yes. How about we start with on-call professional services? So the first item is a uh, proposal for agreement for on-call professional services. Um, this will be shared between the engineering and the community development and planning departments uh, for planned environment associates to assist us with various projects as needed, including, among others, um, uh, supplemental information that we need for grants from time to time, uh, documentation that needs to be submitted with grants. Um, I need a little bit of assistance with preparations for some documents for the Beachwood Lakes project, um, and then there are a variety of other things that the engineering department will use for this. So um, we've, we've had a uh, contract similar to this before in the past, so just re requesting approval of this contract. Make a motion to approve. Second, and the amount is hourly? It's hourly based on the sheet that's attached. Okay. Yes. And this is something right now with the limited staff we have just you don't have the time and we're making we're having so many projects working right have you worked with this group before yes further discussion hearing none all in favor state by saying aye 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 opposed motion passes 2-0 the second item is approval of a contract with Lakeshore, Lakeshore seasonal services for um, landscaping maintenance for Newport landing for 2022 this would begin um, basically um, immediately um, with cleanup in the spring, mowing uh, and treatment uh, throughout the year, and then fall cleanup, <clears throat> as well as necessary um, irrigation um, assessment and uh, repairs as needed. Um, so this is the same contract that the city had uh, last year with Lakeshore Seasonal uh, Services um, and the total amount of the contract is I believe the same as last year as well at $26,565.98. Um, there's also a provision for additional services as needed. Make a motion to approve. A second and I think Jeff is here. Jeff is here. I'm sorry, yes, from Jeff Lakeshore. is here from Lakeshore. And what I do want to say, we do have a motion and a second. I talked to Jeff. Uh, there's some necessary cleanup mm -hmm. uh, in the median, uh, especially over there at Newport Landing. And Jeff is already, I want to say thank you publicly, if you don't mind standing. Um, without even this approval, he said they will get there this week, clean up the Newport Landing area because it is in much need. Uh, as a part of the contract versus yep. trash abatement is a part of the project. So thank yeah. you. That's a tr yeah. that's a true partner. That's a true partner. They'll find very easy where all the trash is. And a reminder to the public: that's why we have trash cans and canisters to throw things away uh, if anybody's throwing things out the window. So uh, with that, further discussion. Mm -mm. Hearing none. All in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 2-0. And again, thank you. That is a true partner. Uh, Tim Warner, you have another contract item? Uh, yes. So <clears throat> as you all uh, aware, we're trying to uh, have Todd Taylor under contract again uh, for some inspection services for the, for the new uh, proposed well uh, field. Um, so, you know, Everybody in here knows Todd. He's passionate about the water uh, in the city of Laporte, and uh, you know he's he's a very uh, knowledgeable in in how the city's ran and uh, what needs to be done in the permitting for the item. Uh, and to be realistic, uh, paying him this monthly service is cheaper than having a, 
inspector on site out there. So I think it's in the city's best interest to sign this contract. I've also offered his services to uh, Jeff Batchelor for some road repairs. Todd's very uh, diverse in, in road repairs and stuff like that. He's willing to drive around with Jeff and just uh, talk about some stuff uh, when it comes to road repair. Uh, so I, like I said, I think it's in the city's best interest to, to sign this contract uh, moving forward retain him uh, for the the rest of the year. <clears throat> I, I didn't come to you in December or January to sign the contract yeah. because there, there wasn't any construction on the wells at that time and I just felt it was best to uh, to wait till we needed his services again. So that's why I'm in front of you today. I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Discussion and Todd has passionate for the residents for the city and uh, clean water is important. Yes, and sir. our staff, this is needed and so I'm excited. Further discussion? We had this agreement with him in 2021 also, because I yes. remember seeing this before. Okay, so it was last year. All right, great. Thank you. All in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 2-0. Unfinished other business, a couple items. Spring cleanup is the last week in April 25th through the 29th. That doesn't mean you put things out now for then <laughs> um, and this month of April is also child abuse prevention week uh, month uh, so family advocates is out promoting that you'll see the signs out here and anybody interested in volunteering to make sure children uh, their voice is heard please stop in at family advocates to see where you could be helpful and uh, it's quite a rewarding experience Lastly, I just, uh, oh, don't forget today, early voting. Let's show people we care by getting out and voting. And uh, you can vote, I know, at the county courthouse. Don't wait till the last day on election day. If you get in a jam, can't make it, you can have your voting done. So please get out and vote uh, and make your voice heard. Lastly, I want to say April 11th, next Monday, 5.30 p.m. at the county uh, council meeting. Uh, basically, it's a public meeting for the public to share any thoughts on the public safety local income tax. And I will tell you this. Um, I have just not heard many, if any, people not supportive <clears throat> of our public safety team, fire, police, EMS, because this is bigger than just the city of LaPorte. It's, it's Michigan City, it's our county, and everybody wants somebody to respond when they make that call to 911. And we hear the money just to pay officers and firefighters um, to keep them here and stop them leaving so we're competitive is $750,000 a year in an increase. If you look at having more, pe more than four people on a, on a call list or on a what do we call it? Uh, shift. On a shift and really becoming proactive against the drug issue that everybody wants us working on. And again, we had another sad situation. Great family lost a 26 year old to an overdose last week. These are good people. And our officers, our team wants to be proactive on this. We have to pay for it. We give $32 million back countywide between all local units of government back to homeowners in a form of a property tax uh, relief. We're asking only for a third of that via income tax to help pay for what everybody expects to have in their community to keep them safe, and that's public safety. If somebody has a question about this local income tax that 11 boards have passed already, please call me at 363-7293. You're welcome to talk about it with us here, show up at the meeting, and uh, we're excited, encourage as many people to attend as possible. And then they will have a vote on the 28th of April that I've been assured that will not get extended. And I've talked to at least five or six council people on the county level that have already committed if we go around and get all these votes this is the right thing to do and they will vote to support this I can't imagine anybody can you see anybody looking fire police the public in the eyes and backing out on what they've committed to 
it's, it's so we support those county council members that have committed to it and support so where's the meeting going to be held? at the county complex 530 so with that any other comment from the board I got a question uh, we've been getting calls about the spring cleanup the maybe Jeff or Annette may be able to answer this are they still expecting everybody to shrink wrap or plastic wrap the materials that are going outside I would think the furniture and that stuff would still be the same so any upholstered items have to be wrapped okay thank you do I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. I will second that. <clears throat> All in favor, state by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.